Welcome to another Winning Team coaching video. I want to share some thoughts to get you thinking and discussing uh, yourself and with your team about two particular roles, two particular approaches that are essential to any team. And as people, we tend to default to one of these approaches, one of these roles more than the other. And those two roles are the roles of leader and manager. Now, when people have talked about leadership and management, sometimes it can come across, it could be received as, you know, the leader is the one we should all aspire to be and the manager is kind of that function, that role that we kind of want to avoid. Almost like the exciting stuff is with the leader and the kind of monotonous uh, stuff is with the manager. But we need to dispel those myths because really uh, it's not that we need to run from management to leadership, but it's almost like management and leadership needs to be a tension that we hold. And I want to challenge you as an individual to identify which you lean more toward, the leader or the manager, and to challenge you to do some self-reflection on how you can improve your leadership or management competency. Because I think we need in each of us to develop both roles, even though we will, by nature, be stronger at one than the other. And then, of course, we have team. We have a team because it allows those of us who have a strong management default and bias uh, to play that role well and to bring that strength. And of course, then to lean on others who have that leadership bias, that leadership role, and to bring their strength. And then together in the team, that tension is created. But so I want, to, I want that to be a personal reflection and challenge and then a team reflection and challenge. So I'm going to share this over two, possibly three videos. Uh, it's quite a big subject. And so hopefully I'll give you some thoughts some questions to think through. Uh, one of Britain's uh, great military leaders uh, of the last century was Field Marshal William Slim. And he made an interesting distinction between leadership and management. He kind of likened leadership as the spirit compounded of personality and vision. In other words, it's an art form, okay? It's an art form. Whereas management, he said, is of the mind. It's more a matter of accurate calculation, of statistics, of methods, timetables and routine. In other words, it's more of a practice of science. Managers, he says, are necessary leaders are essential and he wrote this back in 1957 many people seem to believe that he was ahead of his time certainly uh, ahead of the discussion uh, which has taken place in recent decades about management and leadership so i like the way that he's put it that almost that leadership is like an art form and management is more of a science and i guess there's the biological uh, factor here that they say the human brain is made up of two sides and and the left side is more the analytical and the logical side of the brain and then the right side is the creative artistic side of the brain and that again as human beings we tend to lead from one more than the other we bias one over the other so it's really interesting that this is a biological, this has a biological um, factor, it, it has a personality factor. And so it, it, notice what he says there, that managers are necessary, leaders are essential. And so I guess if you were to look at it from the point of view of, of like building a house, you know, when building a house, a foundation is absolutely essential because you can start building above the ground at kind of the uh, engineering brick level and build upwards and all of that is necessary. The walls, the structure is absolutely essential. 
But without the foundation, then there's no longevity in the building. And I guess that's a bit like the leader and the manager. The leader is like the foundation. In other words, you build a foundation based upon the future use of that, that property. So for instance, if, if I want to build a house that's going to house a growing family, and let's say I know that that family is going to be eight people, then of course I'm going to build a foundation that's going to allow a structure to go on top that will facilitate that amount of people. So, so the foundation is built with the future in mind. But then, of course, the structure is built so that you can occupy it in the present. And there's an interesting distinction there that, that, that the leader brings that future foundation, but the manager brings that present occupancy. In other words, that the ability to, for it to be useful now. And, you know, as I look back in my journey, I know which one I am. I am a, a leader bias, future focused person. And I've got to be honest with you, I've, I've learned the hard way when it comes to accepting and understanding the essential nature and function of the manager. Because let's face it, you know, vision excites people, it inspires and, and it gets that sense of like movement in people. Right, what do we got to do? And then I realized, right, great, I can build this picture of the future, but that's, that's great for the future, but we can't occupy it in the present without the function of the manager. And so you need these two things to work together. If, I, if, if I'm just manager biased and focused, then I will all be about the now. In other words, doing what I need to do today to, to occupy what I can see today. Well, that's great, but it doesn't necessarily inspire for uh, transforming the future and tomorrow. It limits capability. It limits the, the potential of what we could build. And so a team full of managers um, would, could be potentially very organized and, and get on with what they need to get on with to today. But actually, we need leaders who will carve and create a picture, carve a path, create a picture of a future that inspires. And then we need that manager present, uh, presence to help us to occupy that on a day-by-day -day basis, to build in the structures and the systems that are going to bring the functionality of the house that we're building. And so I want to throw that picture out to you. And, and in the next video, I'm going to draw down on some more of the distinctions and I think there's three particular categories of distinctions. But I guess the question I would want you maybe just to think about right now and to ask yourself and to even talk about in your team, which, just from what I've shared so far, which bias do you think you've got? Uh, do you think you've got a leader bias? So that future focus, that dreaming up, creating that picture of the future, um, or do you have a manager bias? In other words, you're the logistical, uh, analytical, left side of the brain, systems and structures. What have we got to do today to get things done? And so just have a think about that. And, and, and so once you've identified which you are, I want you to secondly answer the question, in what way could I be neglecting the leader, bias or the manager bias and what cost is that having on progress personally and professionally okay what cost because it's having a cost I look back I realize my inability to appreciate and embrace the manager bias and to empower the manager bias and gifting ha worked against me and worked against our progress and so I, I can identify the cost because sometimes it's only when we identify the cost we realize the need to really drill down and to understand these two important functions. Okay, answer those questions and then we'll talk more in the next video.